The slideshow is on negative and positive psychology. Negative psychology might be defined as the psychology of dysfunction. It's probably what we all think of when we think of people who are not doing very well and who need to see a psychotherapist, a counselor, a psychologist, a psychiatrist. These are people who need treatment in the hope that they will be able to function at a higher level. This is the realm of abnormal psychology. It deals with what used to be called neuroses and psychoses. People who are in the area of negative psychology are in pain. They are not making it in life. They are not functioning at the level that they want to function. They're not having the kind of relationships that they want to have. Maybe they're not able to hold a job. Maybe they're not able to stay married. Maybe they're not able to do relationships. Negative psychology as opposed to positive psychology. Positive psychology might be considered the psychology of normal people. That is to say, functional people, successful people, people who are doing well in life, who have jobs, who have families, who have homes, who have money in the bank, who are functional, successful, capable people. At the same time, they're people who can always do better. Anybody can. But they're doing quite well. If you were to consider the negative psychology, positive psychology realms on a line, <clears throat> perhaps on the negative side of the line, you might see negative psychology. And on the positive side of the line, see positive psychology. As the numbers get more negative, from minus 1 to minus 2 down to minus 10, you would see increasing dysfunction. So that, for example, uh, a person at the far left of the line might well be institutionalized, unable to cope. These are people who are hearing voices. These are people who are so um, anxious and so um, decompensated that they really aren't able to carry on a normal life at all. As you move up towards the zero point, um, people would be more functional but still in real pain, not able to do a lot of the things that they would like to do. And um, this is the place where counseling does most of its work. We consider this the domain of counseling. That is to say that these are the people who need a therapist. Maybe they need somebody to put them in the hospital for a while. Maybe they are criminally insane, so to speak. Maybe they are paranoid schizophrenics or borderline personality disorder people. Maybe they have obsessive compulsive disorders or multiple personalities. Um, these are people who may need medication, who may need hospitalization, who may need talk therapy. Um, to some degree or other, they are dysfunctional. On the positive side of the zero point, you have people who function quite well. Nobody would ever say that they were mentally handicapped in any way, that they were mentally ill, that they had a problem, a mental disorder of some kind. They are successful people who are doing very well, and yet, <clears throat> they, as I said before, they could do better. They could experience an even higher level of functionality. This is the domain of coaching. You know, coaching is helping people attain what it is that they want to attain, get to where they want to be. They're, while these people are functional and successful, there's a gap between where they are and where they would really like to be. And um, they would like to close that gap and to reach a little higher. <clears throat> so that if you were to consider psychology, you might look at it as divided into two main worlds, the world of negative psychology and the world of positive psychology. And then if you were to look at positive psychology, you could probably call this the world of flourishing. That is to say, people who are flourishing in their environment. They're doing well. They are functional and they are able to handle the inevitable setbacks of life, illness, financial reverses, losses, with some degree of resiliency. So that these people who are flourishing have two main characteristics. Number one, competency. Number two, resiliency. They are competent in that they are able to do life. And they're resilient in that they're able to bounce back when life hands them something hard to deal with. 
If you're interested in additional study in this issue, I can't think of anybody better to refer you to than Dr. Martin Seligman, who's a professor at the University of Pennsylvania, the founder of Positive Psychology, the Institute of Positive Psychology and Positive Therapy. You can either Google him or you can uh, go to Amazon and look for books by his name or our local library.